Monte Carlo simulation users often have a common question, how many iterations should I run in a simulation? Like almost everything in life, it all depends. In this case, it depends on several factors such as the complexity of the model, number of variables and their relationships, correlations, shapes of the distributions, etc., the availability of time and the precision required in the responses, technically known as the convergence of your model. In general, the more iterations you run, the longer it will take and the more accurate the output responses will be. Also, it depends on which results interest you the most. With our example of operational risk, we will illustrate these concepts and finally arrive at a satisfactory answer. We focus here on the only output variable, the loss cell in B18. If you were to run only 100 iterations, your histogram would look like this. With 200 iterations, which is the maximum number of iterations allowed in the student version, the histogram begins to smooth out. The gaps start to fill in and you start to see a more stable and robust representation of your simulated output. 500 iterations will produce the following histogram. 1000 iterations would produce the following histogram. With 10,000 iterations, the process would show a much smoother and more convergent histogram. However, there comes a time when as the number of iterations increases, the smoothness of the histogram or the convergence does not necessarily increase significantly. Take a look at the simulated histogram after 50,000 iterations. The more iterations you add to your process, the more stable your curve, and especially your stats, will be. Some statistics like the mean and median converge quickly. Others, like extreme percentiles, tend to require more iterations to stabilize. However, the more iterations, the longer the process takes. Generating 200 iterations, the maximum limit in the free version of DT Simulator, will only take 5 seconds on my computer for this particular model. 50,000 iterations will take more than 16 minutes. In terms of iterations per second, it seems that an optimum is reached around 2 to 8,000 iterations, in which the simulation process is around 70 iterations per second. After this threshold, the process becomes less efficient as difficulties in storing and handling large amounts of data affect Excel. Now again, depending on how precise you want to achieve on certain statistical goals, your number of required iterations may be different. For example, if you are only interested in the mean or average operational risk, based on the central limit theorem, 1000 iterations might be sufficient. Before 1000 iterations, the mean has not stabilized. It will take about 8000 iterations for the mean to stabilize somewhat lower than what was calculated down to just 1000 iterations. If on the other hand, you're interested in the P90, maybe in 20,000 iterations you still haven't achieved a stable enough percentile. Remember that probabilistic contingencies are generally constructed as the difference between a certain extreme percentile, 90th, denoting the confidence level minus the mean or median. In this case, if you were to construct a contingency, P90 minus median, after 1000 iterations, you would allocate $13,023, 13.3% of the median. If you were to assign the contingency after the process has stabilized with 10,000 iterations, the contingency would be more accurate at $12,465, 12.7% of the median. In other words, 10,000 iterations arrive at a more precise number. Otherwise, just 1,000 iterations would have underestimated the contingency by almost 5%. It seems that the process requires at least 5,000 iterations to stabilize. If, instead, you are interested in a more extreme percentile, such as the 95th, your iterations required to achieve convergence or stability in the results could be even higher. Since fewer samples are collected after the 95th percentile, by definition, only 5% of the iterations, then more iterations are needed to collect enough samples to achieve convergence at the 95th percentile. To summarize, it is impossible to give general rules about how many iterations are required. 
It all depends on the nature of your model, the precision you require, and the availability of time. In general, the more iterations that are simulated, the more time and precision to expect. In my experience, the magic number usually starts around 5000 to 10,000 iterations. Most processes do not converge successfully after only 200 or 1000 iterations, and most of the time, more than 20,000 iterations will not gradually improve your accuracy. But it all depends on the user's preferences. The following two graphs compare the same thing, a simulated histogram with only 200 iterations and one with 50,000 iterations. The two show the same methodology and eventually converge on the same results. At the test or student level, the understanding of the methodology can be perfectly achieved with the graph on the left made with 200 iterations. At a professional level and for making robust decisions in reality contexts, our recommendation is, obviously, to carry out a sufficient number of iterations to achieve convergence.